Military power rarely shifts because of a single weapon. It changes when a system alters assumptions that planners rely on. For years, the S-500 represented the upper edge of what air and missile defense could realistically achieve. It pushed interception into higher altitudes and forced analysts to reconsider how secure airspace really was. Now, discussions around a potential S-700 suggest something even more consequential. Not because it is simply bigger or faster, but because it could redefine how airspace, near space, and decision-making are controlled. In this video, we examine why moving from the S-500 to a possible S-700 could be a true game-changer, and how such a system would reshape modern military thinking. The S-500 established a foundation that went beyond traditional air defense. It was designed not only to intercept aircraft, but also to challenge ballistic and high-altitude threats. This alone forced a shift in planning, as systems once considered safe at extreme altitude were now within reach. However, the S-500 still operated largely within known defensive logic. It detected, tracked, and engaged threats once they entered defined zones. Its value was immense, but it still functioned as a reaction-based system. That limitation is where analysts believe the next evolution begins. The idea behind an S-700 is not merely extending the S-500's reach, but transforming its role. Instead of acting as a shield that reacts to threats, the S-700 is widely speculated to act as a control layer that shapes the air environment itself. Analysts suggest it would focus on persistent awareness rather than episodic detection. In modern warfare, knowing what is happening earlier than your opponent often matters more than having more missiles. A system that controls information can control outcomes before engagement ever occurs. One of the most discussed elements in analytical circles is sensor dominance. The S-700 is believed to integrate a new generation of sensors, potentially combining ground-based radar, passive detection systems, and space-linked inputs. This would allow it to track objects far beyond traditional radar horizons. Even incomplete or low-confidence detections can be strategically valuable, as they force adversaries to assume they are being observed. This erodes confidence in stealth and complicates mission planning long before aircraft approach defended zones. Artificial intelligence would likely sit at the center of this architecture. Unlike earlier systems where AI-assisted operators, the S-700 is expected to rely on AI for continuous threat assessment and prioritization. This means analyzing patterns of movement, predicting trajectories, and assessing intent across multiple domains simultaneously. Human operators would oversee outcomes rather than calculate responses. This reduces reaction time and allows the system to function effectively even under saturation conditions, where human decision-making would otherwise slow down. The transition from S-500 to S-700 also suggests a shift in how engagement decisions are made. Rather than focusing on individual targets, the S-700 would likely evaluate entire threat ecosystems. This includes support aircraft, launch platforms, and command nodes. By understanding how different elements interact, the system could influence adversary behavior indirectly. Aircraft may be forced to fly longer routes, operate at less optimal altitudes, or rely more heavily on vulnerable support assets. The battle begins at the planning table, not the launch point. Manufacturing and system design would play a critical role in making such a system viable. Analysts believe that any S-700 class system would rely heavily on automation and modular construction. Robotic assembly and standardized components would allow consistent performance across deployments. This is not just an industrial choice, but a strategic one. Systems that can be produced, maintained, and upgraded efficiently remain relevant longer and adapt faster to changing threats. Range, often the headline metric, takes on a different meaning in this context. For the S-700, extended range would not only refer to missile reach, but to detection and tracking depth. Seeing farther means deciding earlier. It creates time, and time is the most valuable resource in air defense. Extended range forces adversaries to operate farther from defended areas, pushing critical assets like tankers and airborne command platforms into more vulnerable positions. This increases operational cost and risk without a single missile being launched. Power, in analytical terms, is also redefined. Rather than focusing on maximum speed or explosive force, the S-700 would likely emphasize energy management and sustained control. 
Interceptors designed for stable maneuvering over long distances are harder to defeat than those relying on brief bursts of extreme speed. This suggests a mature design philosophy where reliability and adaptability matter more than dramatic performance figures. Another potential game-changing aspect is resilience. Analysts speculate that the S700 would be built as a distributed system rather than a single vulnerable node. Multiple sensors, redundant communication paths, and autonomous subsystems would allow it to continue operating even under attack. This makes suppression far more complex. Instead of targeting one system, an adversary would need to degrade an entire network, consuming time and resources. Integration across domains is where the S700 truly separates itself from previous generations. It would not exist solely as an air defense system, but as part of a broader command and control structure. Data from air, space, and ground assets would be fused into a single operational picture. This allows coordinated responses that are faster and more precise. It also means that degrading one layer does not blind the system. Information continues to flow. From a strategic perspective, the S700's greatest impact may be psychological rather than kinetic. Its presence introduces uncertainty. Without clear public specifications, planners must assume worst-case capabilities. This uncertainty forces more conservative planning, increases costs, and slows decision-making. Deterrence is achieved not through visible force, but through ambiguity and risk calculation. For Western militaries, the S-700 represents a challenge to long-standing assumptions about air superiority. The idea that advanced aircraft can always find a way through defenses becomes harder to sustain. Instead, emphasis may shift toward standoff operations, cyber effects, and multi-domain suppression strategies. This adaptation process itself consumes time and resources, which is precisely what deterrence aims to achieve. It is important to emphasize that much of what is discussed about the S-700 remains analytical rather than confirmed. Intelligence assessments rely on patterns, investments, and doctrinal shifts rather than official announcements. However, history shows that major systems often emerge after long periods of quiet development. When they do appear, the strategic groundwork has already been laid. If the S-700 materializes as analysts expect, it will not replace the S-500 but sit above it. The S-500 would handle defined interception roles, while the S-700 would manage awareness, coordination, and strategic control. Together, they would form a layered architecture that complicates every stage of adversary planning. Ultimately, what makes the S-700 a potential game-changer is not a single breakthrough, but the convergence of trends. Extended awareness, deep automation, resilient networks, and strategic ambiguity combined to shift the balance of control. In modern warfare, controlling information, time, and decision space is more decisive than raw firepower. If the S-700 achieves that, it will change how airspace is contested long before the first missile is ever launched. Share your thoughts below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us next time as we explore more of the world's most advanced military technologies.